Hello, I'm The Theorizer, and if you're a loyal viewer, one that stuck by me since the very, very beginning, you'd know that I've made multiple videos on the super tough pink puff of death known as Kirby. September 27th, 2015, my sixth theory. How strong is Kirby? His suck got analyzed. Skip ahead to March 6, 2016, Kirby's ice breath calculated. I looked at Kirby in Smash Bros and figured out how cold his ice breath was. Since then, I've applied math to countless other video games, but something felt incomplete. Then it clicked. I glossed right over all of Kirby's other transformations, but there are just so many, it gets too tricky. Not to fret, I have a solution. I'm going to begin by narrowing it down to my favorite Kirby game, Kirby Superstar. But because I already have a Nintendo DS emulator on my computer, let's go with its nearly identical counterpart, Kirby Superstar Ultra. Okay, so that narrows things down quite a bit. Kirby Superstar Ultra still has so many transformations, though. What to do, what to do... Hmm, I know. We'll take out all of the transformations that are visibly going to be quite weak. And what I mean, specifically, is just how pathetic they'd be in real life. This obviously removes sleep, parasol, paint, yo-yo, cook, mirror, and wing, as none of them are realistically that dangerous. We can also take out Copy, as he isn't a real transformation, and Starship, because I'm only including transformations where Kirby is standing. Also, remember, Kirby is confirmed to be 8 inches tall, so normally deadly things won't be that deadly. In such a weak world, we can definitely assume that Beam, Bomb, Cutter, Fighter, Hammer, Ninja, Suplex, and Sword would all be like tiny bugs jumping on you, punching and cutting you with such tiny moves and weapons, it wouldn't have a deathly impact. So we are finally left with the strongest moves in the game, and this is just by looking at it, we haven't even calculated yet. But hold up a sec. Wheel. He may look fast, but I did a basic calculation, and it was revealed that he rolls in at a measly and pathetic 1.6 meters per second. Even when you scale him up to what he'd be in our world, he still only goes about 6 meters per second. And because he's so dinky and insignificant, we will push him out. Eliminated. And my apologies, but before we start, I have another thing to say. Plasma. He is composed of sheer electricity and superheated gas. Physics involving the two gets so ridiculous it's currently beyond my fathoming. <laughs> Get it? Current? We're, we're dealing with electricity? <laughs> okay, I apologize for my punderfully stupid electromagnetism zingers, but I must say, they are pretty electrifying. <laughs> I can't resist. Ugh, let me conduct something else. Uh, what is wrong with me today? Hey, brother. That's just a theory. I'm cringing too hard. Please, remember me for my over-the-top idiocy. Anyways, uh, oh great, now I've completely lost my flow. <laughs> oh, my stupidity is shocking. <laughs> <laughs> this pun thing has gone in a full circuit, but I'm in charge. I'm powerful. So let's put an end to these punny jokes. <laughs> <clears throat> plasma physics are too much for me, and so I'll be leaving plasma out of my collection. Also, Crash. His physics are too ridiculous to calculate, and nothing he does works right. So finally, finally, we have the five best Kirby transformations. Ice... Fire, Mike, Stone, and Jet. Now, this is thermodynamics, acoustics, mechanics, and rocket science. Are you prepared? Let's go. Ice should be a piece of cake. We're finding out how cold he breathes. I already did all of that in a previous video. Unfortunately, that was for Super Smash Bros, not a properly scaled game. So using the biggest equation I've ever derived, which I have illegitimately since referred to as the Kirby equation, I redid all of those calculations to fit this game instead. I tested the ice breath on a chicken, and looked up all of the thermal statistics of a chicken. 
If you want to know how I did all of this math, then you should go watch that vid. Long story short, since everything is smaller in Kirby's world, so is the temperature of his ice breath. And in Kirby Superstar Ultra, Kirby breathes with an approximate temperature of negative 4900 degrees Celsius. Woo! Tis fairly cold, but not as cold as the Smash Bros. Kirby. But something else to note here is that there is a temperature at which point nothing can get any colder. It is known as absolute zero and is around negative 273.15 degrees Celsius. Anything colder breaks the laws of physics. I mean, this temperature we just calculated is way more than enough to freeze every gas in the universe. So simply put, Kirby's move defies physics to work and we're off to a great start. So assuming absolute zero isn't a thing, this transformation is very strong. Instant freezing of anything nearby. And the inverse square law can tell us just how far away it could be felt. You would still feel about negative 10 degrees Celsius from 22 meters or 72 feet away. This is quite literally the coldest thing in the universe. So jumping to the opposite end of the spectrum, let's do fire next. This one was a bit trickier. For this one to work, I needed to create a hypothetical situation. A human is shrunk down to Kirby's size, and Kirby's fire breath burns the human. How hot must Kirby's fire breath be to burn skin? I did a very similar thing here to what I did in my Smash Bros video, and what I just did with the ice. I measured how far away Kirby's flamethrower reached based on his 8 inch height, timed it, used the square cube law to figure out the mass of a tiny human, and then I looked up a ton of the thermal stats of humans and air. Then I got my formulas, clumped them all together, substituted, expanded, simplified, and rearranged for temperature. Basically, I figured out Kirby's volume flow rate, the thermal energy of the receiving human, and the heat flow rate. The math is on the screen, as it's a bit much to fully explain. And the super tough pink puff can expel temperatures up to 3450 degrees Celsius. Now, that is a lot. That's enough to melt aluminum, brass, copper, iron, nickel, platinum, steel, tin, gold, and several other materials I've never heard of. As a matter of fact, this temperature is enough to boil all of those metals into their gas forms. This is hotter than all of the volcanoes on Earth, but it is half the temperature of the Earth's core. This temperature is almost enough to melt carbon. That is the hardest element on the periodic table to melt. The inverse square law tells us that anything made out of wood within 10 feet of this fiery move would burst into flames. Now let's hop over to Mike. How loud is he? Well, sound loudness is measured in decibels. Decibels are on a funny scale. 20 dB is 10 times more powerful than 10 dB. 30 dB is 100 times more powerful than 10 dB. And 40 dB is 1000 times more powerful than 10 dB. So you can see now how this scale is a bit crazy. In normal conditions, no sound can exceed 194 dB, because at that point, it becomes a shock wave. A normal conversation is around 63 dB, a hand drill is 98, a power saw is 110, pain will begin at 125, 150 dB is enough to burst your eardrums, and a 12 gauge shotgun is around 165 dB. And you literally have the chance to die if you are exposed to anything around 190 dB. So since Mike kills everybody on the screen, we can assume that around 190 dB will be heard by all of them. This is the decibel formula. If we rearrange it, we can find the sound intensity. With that, we can figure out how loud Kirby is. Rearranging, we get an intensity of 10 million watts per square meter. Holy boss Taurus, that's intense. If we compare that with the distance the enemies are from Kirby, about 2 meters, then this makes Kirby a speaker that blasts with almost 200 decibels. Even the Joker would call that insane. But what can we do with this? Well, we can start by converting it back to intensity, and since we know the distance that enemies are away, we can use this formula and rearrange it to find the power. 512 million. 
758,186.5 watts. I have never seen a stereo like that before. Oh, and also, the scream lasts for an average of exactly one second, and since power times time equals energy, the energy is also 512 million, but in joules. And once we have energy, we have everything. But quickly, before we delve into the acoustic energization, I want to point out something with the power. If Kirby wasn't like a speaker and was more of, say, a light bulb, then how bright would he be? Power times luminous efficacy is luminous flux. We already know the power, and luminous efficacy is somewhat like how efficient a bulb is, but sort of not. But irregardless, white light bulbs, like what Kirby would be, have a theoretical max efficacy of 250 lumens per watt. Multiplying gives us 1.282 times 10 to the 11th lumens. But I'm almost certain that you can't visualize that. Just what does 128 billion lumens look like? Well, 0.025 lumens is the brightness of one firefly. 12.5 lumens is the light output of a single candle. 780 lumens is about a 60 watt light bulb. 930 is a 75 watt bulb. 600,000 lumens is the output of an IMAX projector bulb. And finally, 42.3 billion lumens is the Luxor sky beam, the strongest beam of light in the whole entire world. So 128 billion would snatch up Luxor's first place victory quite easily, if you're still a bit stuck on how terrifyingly bright this Kirby bulb would actually be, well we can compare its illuminance instead. Kirby kills everything in an angle shaped like this, and this distance is about 2.02 .02 meters, so filling out these formulas we get an illuminance of 8.29 times 10 to the 10 lux. An illuminance so horrifically insane, it's not funny. Zero lux is pitch black darkness, one lux is moonlight, 400 lux is a sunset, and an extremely bright sun, like the most illuminant it can be, is only about 120,000 lux. Our Kirby powered bulb is 83 billion lux. That's crazy. But back to the energy I was previously discussing. Mike gives off 512 million joules, and thanks to this Richter equation, we know that an energy like that would produce a 2.6 on the Richter scale. Well, that's measly and pathetic, so let's compare it to something less earth-shaking. If this energy was, perhaps, electricity, and was striking a human, it would send a current of 70 amps through their body. Well, a tenth of an amp will kill a human being, so this is 700 times more lethal. Shocking. So that's Mike in a nutshell, but let's solidify for a moment. Stone. So what I did was I floated up on a very high stage, and then solidified. Kirby took about a half a second to reach the ground. Because the game has improper gravity, we will just use Earth's gravity, 9.81 meters per second per second. And we can use this formula to find out how fast Kirby would be going upon impact. The half a second multiplied by gravity is 4.91 meters per second upon impact. But to find the crushing force of this stone, we need two other quantities the mass of Kirby, and the time it takes him to go from full speed back to zero speed. I checked frame by frame and got about 0.13 seconds for the time. All we need now is Kirby's rocky weight. But because we want to work with huge numbers, we are going to go with his 8 ton weight transformation. 8 tons is 7,257 kilograms, and calculating the rest gives us a force of 274,000 newtons. For perspective's sake, that's almost 61,000 pounds of crush. So I got a bit imaginative and put in some insanely high numbers. If Kirby's 8 ton slam went down 100 feet, he'd produce 302,000 500 pounds of force. If he did it from 1,000 feet, he'd produce 956,580 pounds of force. And finally, if Kirby was dropped out of a plane without any air resistance, he would hit the ground 32,000 feet below with 5.41 million pounds of force. Sheesh, ain't nobody got time for that. Finally, we're blasting off with Jet, a fully powered jet 
will send Kirby eight Kirbys far, or 1.62 meters. Timing his flight, he takes about 0.43 seconds. Distance divided by time equals velocity, and doing the math means that this rocket launches him an epic 3.76 meters per second. The jet takes 0.07 seconds to reach that full speed, and that means that its user experiences 53.7 meters per second per second, or 5.5 Gs. I just want to say right now that the launch force is hardly anything, as Kirby's fairly light when he's not sucking, but that acceleration, 5 Gs will kill a human pretty fast, so this jet is certainly a bit deadly. But which one of these is the most deadly? Ice breathes with almost negative 5,000 degrees Celsius. Fire breathes with around 3,450 degrees Celsius. And Mike screeches with 200 decibels, enough power to be the brightest thing on Earth. Stone has the capability to apparently weigh 8 tons, which means he will land with millions of pounds of force. And Jet? He has enough acceleration Gs to kill a human. So who is our winner for most deadly transformation? Well, humans can experience 5 Gs, but not for a long time, so Jet could be survivable. Stone is only deadly if you are directly beneath him, not around him, so he is also out. Ice and fire are completely deadly, but only if you are quite close by. Yes, the acoustic overpowered stereo blaster Mike is the winner. When he screams, you would literally be able to feel pain from five and a half kilometers away. Now that is a move. And all of this is coming from an eight inch tall pink puff ball. Until next time, I'm the Theorizer.